a CFO for your company a lot, and the first thing they said when you told me you're going to come to business in Mexico, oh my God, no one pays their bills. Wire money in advance. I'm sure everyone's heard that, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Me too. Our first, my first job, I worked for a family company, and our CFO was really tough and said uh, we shouldn't be selling to Mexico. So we did a little research, and the first thing we ended up with was the uh, Export-Import Bank of the United States. And what they do is they insure the receivables. So I'm going to tell you some pros of using ex import export bank and some cons and what we end up doing now. Okay, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you a little bit about it, give you a little history. This is just more from the other day where it talks about Barack Obama. Uh, this is the chairman's message. A couple of key points in there. They have a lot of things for U.S. business, global access for small businesses. Um, they help you export into 150 countries. There's some countries that are not on the list. Of course, Mexico is on the list, so that's a good thing. Uh, here's some of the cool things. Global access. They have an initiative, National Export Initiative, to create jobs. <coughs> they have uh, a couple things that are really cool. They have a streamlined application real fast, up to $300,000. So if you're a small business, and you've been in business more than a year, that's all it needs is more than a year, and uh, you have a positive net worth, even if it's a dollar positive, you can go get this, let's hope that's the case. Uh, and so they'll, they'll insure up to 90% of that receivable. So if you sell a, a container load of $50,000, um, and something goes wrong, the government will pay $45,000 of it, and the other five is, you lose. But as I said, if you're making more than 10%, you're okay. They provide a lot of these other, uh, guarantees. There's a lot of other things we can go into. They do, uh, if you were selling equipment, loan equipment, uh, they have programs where you can give six months a year financing and, and they'll finance it uh, for the people. Global access, a little bit more for a small business. They're approving like $30 billion a year in small business transactions. Uh, you hear a lot, Exim Bank, and they do a lot of big deals, so GE, you hear a lot of that where they build things, but really who uses it more is the small business owners like us, the guys that are using these kind of things. Uh, new products, they have a lot of new products that they talk about. This is uh, trade finance, uh, loan guarantee is what I'm talking about, direct loans, they can actually do a direct loan uh, to help you, uh, but on that, that's an 85% one eligibility, so a little bit different. Here are the pros. I'm going to tell you some of the pros that we talked about. You have to have U.S. product. So if you guys have U.S. product, they look for small businesses, they'll do 90%. And the thing, very, very important, don't go direct to them to do business. If you just want, if your brain wants to explode and deal with the bureaucracy, hire a broker. So there's brokers that sell insurance. They pay them. So you're dealing with a business owner who wants to close the deal and he's going to do it fast and he's done it thousands of times and he'll get your paper to work through really quick. So. Don't do it on your own. Uh, we've tried it, you go crazy, so hire a broker and he gets it done. Um, some of the other things, uh, con this product. So at the time when we looked into it, we were importing products from around the world. We have products from Italy, from China, from different places. They will not, um, they will not uh, insure those, okay? So, uh, problem, okay? so. Uh, if you're in the middle and you're doing your business and then you your clients approve and then uh, you start importing product from China, now you got a dilemma. What do you do? You sell it? Do you still give them credit? You know, what do you do? So that's a challenge. <clears throat> they only do U.S. dollars. So if you have a subsidiary in Mexico, which we're going to talk about, they will not insure those receivables. And if you invoice in pesos, they won't insure those receivables either. So just U.S. to Mexico and dollar transactions. So a couple of, couple of cons, if, uh, if that's your business that you, got, you want to import and sell in pesos, they're not going to cover it. Um, Does 100% of production have to be in the U.S. or can it be in greater than 50? It, ha it has to be greater. It has to fall under, under those what makes it a U.S. product. So it could be other product put together, 51% of it has to be U.S. Okay. okay? Uh, so there's some good things with XM. Uh, we, our company now, we use uh, Coface and we use Euler. So we have two uh, companies that we use and uh, it's worked out very well for us because uh, we, the U.S. company, we sell into Mexico. We also uh, import into Mexico and then our subsidiary sells in dollars. We sell in pesos. 
So we're doing three or four different things, and so to keep that those balls juggled, we use two different companies. So uh, it's worked out very well for us. I'm going to tell you a little story. Uh, I guess the story is more about perception than anything. Uh, 2008, Jorge told you that was the CEO of a publicly traded company. Um, we, uh, our whole business was imported toward the tour tourism business, so we were buying things in dollars or euros and selling in pesos. Uh, we had about nine million dollars in receivables, and the peso went from 10 to 15, uh, which was a big problem. Our, our insurance, which we had, was AIG. We went to go borrow on, on, on the banks, and at the time, AIG was getting bailed out by the U.S. government. And you would have bankers laugh at you when we came in with AIG. And then six months before, AIG was one of the biggest companies in, in the world, and we got laughed at when we went in there. So perception's a big thing. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with AIG. Um, so that's why the Exxon Bank, when you tell your CFO, hey, our receivables are insured by the U.S. government, let's hope they don't laugh at that. They're going to feel comfortable and, uh, and go from there. So I just wanted to give you a short thing about um, credit insurance, if you need any more help, you could call me, I could give you a list of our broker, and uh, you can look at it in all the ways. If Mexico isn't your first export market, though, uh, when you sign up for the credit insurance, don't you have to start paying that, that premium on all your export business? <coughs> and if I remember correctly, from I've heard of the insurance before, isn't it about 0.75%? Uh, depending on what your volumes are, uh, we're at like 0.35, I think Exum's at 0.50, and it depends on the country, and it depends how many days of credit. So if you give a 30-day <laughs> limit, a 60-day or a 90-day credit, it goes up. So we pay as little as 0.35. And you can be selective in saying, I just want to apply this to my Mexican exports, I don't want to do this with my Canada or my UK, you can only do for Mexico? I can't answer that since I don't know because we only export to Mexico. Oh, okay. So uh, that's, a, that's a good question for a broker. Great question for a broker, and he will know just like that. Um, some of the other things, uh, they give you, uh, after they come in, they look at your credit uh, policies and how you give insurance. They'll give you an amount where they say, hey, you as the credit, uh, the CFO, you can give up to $50,000. We approve you to do that. Anything over that, we need a credit report. Um, let's say up to 100000 or 200000 we need a credit report that, that they approve. Uh, and then if it's more than that, I think it's 300000 or more, you need financial statements. And if you're talking to one of your clients and they're going to buy more than three hundred dollars or $500,000, it should be no problem for them to do your financial statements. So with this, you don't really have to even get a credit trade reference sheet or anything from them in advance. You could just, you could, uh, you could expect that they'll just pay, and if they don't, then you just activate the insurance. Right, under 50000 Under 50000 that's right. You don't need to do it. So... We, uh, we have a policy now in the company, it's, it's either cash or credit insurance. And if they don't get approved for the carry insurance, cash, or they don't, they don't buy. <laughs> Two choices. Any other questions on credit insurance? Has anyone else used credit insurance? Sounds like you have. Yeah, you have to. Okay. It's great. A lot of people in the U.S. have never heard of it. Uh, in Europe, it's very, very, very common. Everyone in Europe does it. Uh, they ship all over the world. They ship to the U.S., so it's much more common than it is here. Uh, we swear by it, so uh, afterwards, we can talk a little bit more or call our office and we'll get you who our broker is, but you can call any broker in the kingdom. Thank you. He was going to give the uh, presentation on Nary's Logistics, but he was not able to attend, so I'm going to give it. Uh, and really, it's everything we've talked about. So the first day, we talked about the three things you need to do before you sell in Mexico. Yesterday, we talked about selling in Mexico. And today, it's pretty much, hey, I got an order. What the heck do I do now? And so that's what we're going to talk about. You've heard a lot about to sell in Mexico or to sell to Mexico. So we're going to go ahead and, and do that. Most everyone here knows. I don't, we just met. So my name is Sandro Pianconi, the Chief Expert Officer and Director of Nary's Logistics. Uh, an expert's a real word. I trademarked it. Uh, a little bit about myself. Born in Sayreville, New Jersey, where great pizza and bandovi come from. I moved to California when I was 10, and I never imagined in a million years I would be speaking Spanish and helping the best U.S. company sell in Mexico. I now live in Chula Vista, California, with my wife Kim and my two m and Michael and Maximo. So, selling to Mexico. There's a big difference, so let's start with selling to Mexico. That's how I started my career. I was in the United States, I was in Vista, California, and I would sell to Mexico. 
It was brutal. It was brutal and painful, but I learned a lot and found a big opportunity. Why was it brutal and painful? My job was to go find distributors. They were all excited. They wanted to do business, and then they place a purchase order, and then it would sit there and sit there, and I'd say, "How come we don't come pick up the product? But well, we don't know how to import it." So then we found ourselves helping them to import it, and so on, and so, uh, and it would be two or four pallets, and it, it would just became a nightmare. And after all this, we found the biggest opportunity was actually importing the product and have it already in Mexico for them. And then sales exploded because we, we had those. So we had to find that opportunity. Pros of selling to Mexico. Do not need to know Mexico tax laws. Your importer will tell you what you need. So you've met some importers and they say, hey, I'm gonna need this, 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 and this. Hopefully they know what they need. You can have multiple customers selling a few pallets here and there. Although we, we all want to sell in truckload quantities, it will probably not happen. So all of us want to sell in full truckloads. It makes our life easier. We can print a label and sell it. doesn't happen that way. Everyone's going to order two pallets, four pallets to start off. Even the biggest chains, a Walmart, will probably start that way. Pros is up. You would ship to the U.S. side of the border, maybe San Diego, Laredo, or Orlando. You would bill in U.S. dollars. You, could, you can get credit insurance and you would import the delinquent accounts to credit reporting agencies. Your CFO would be happy, your shipping department would be happy, it would be easy, okay? The cons, you will still need to provide all the permits that you gold certificates, certificate of analysis, everything that you would need to import, you have to provide that for them, just multiple times, because now you're gonna have multiple customers that you need to provide that for. Labeling, your, your clients may ask you to label the known uh, compliant and sell them to consumer. So you'll have to do several versions for each importer of record. If you have 10 clients, 10 different versions. So you can see yourself making 10 different labels for all these clients. A little bit of a pain, but you need to do it. Longer lead times to get product across the border. You can't provide, you can't provide just in time inventory. Higher freight costs due to LTL, because now your shipping department has to send four pallets to Laredo, four pallets to San Diego, four pallets to Orlando. No price control after you sell it at the border and no in-country marketing support. So those are all the cons. You've heard it. You've heard it the last three days. If you want to sell to Mexico, you need to sell in Mexico. But it's easier, but that's one way to do it. Uh, no in-country marketing. Have you heard of branded program? Y yes. We talked about that. The first, the branded program, the like Busada or the yeah, US. Yeah, exactly. I guess what this means is the way it is, if you're just selling to the border, it's, it's a little bit harder to do all those things. And we'll, we'll get into that. We do all the branded programs. Uh, here's a little thing I have for you. It was actually put on by the U.S. Commercial Service. They're talking about customs, logistics, door-to-door. -door. Your clients want the product delivered to them door-to-door. -door, okay? uh, some of them will say, yeah, I'll buy at the border. I'll do my own importation. I'll do my own labeling. Some of them do it, but they charge you for it. Okay, and uh, which would still be okay if they were able to do the quantities and everything that you wanted. Okay, selling in Mexico. Before I go to selling in Mexico, any questions so far on that? It's easier. I think a lot of us have done it that way. Most of us want to do it that way, but it's not reality. Uh, any questions before we go on to selling to me selling in Mexico? So. Let's discuss selling in Mexico. That is what we do now, and it's made a whole difference in the world. That's what we talked about. Once we were able to take that product, import it into Mexico, then it opened up all our opportunities because now you weren't, you, you weren't letting the customer worry about importation, labeling, all those things. You can control price and you control marketing. That's what all the Fortune 500 companies, the most successful companies have been doing. So most of the big companies, Nestle, Procter & Gamble, um, all the big ones, they're already here in Mexico. They put up their tent, they put up their flag, and they're here selling in Mexico. But I can tell you right now, it's not easy. You would need to do your research, hire the best team of advisors, and be on top of this all the time. I won't go into all the different ways to open a corporation. You can read this book. I told you I brought a bunch of gifts. So this is a book that Deloitte is our, is our auditor, and they put this together once a year. Very informative. They'll talk about how to open a company, how to do business in Mexico. Uh, we'll talk about EVA, facturas electronicas, all those things is in that book. So I won't bore you to death on that. Um, but after you open your new Mexico corporation, and after you have your proton de importación and your factura electronica and your bank accounts, which is not an easy task. If someone's had to open a bank account in Mexico, it is no easy task. 
Uh, now you can start importing and selling in Mexico. After you import, you will need to handle logistics, warehousing, decide where to hold the product. You will need to decide which geographical you will want to start selling. Mexico is a big place. Okay? When we started, we started in Tijuana, Baja California. About five million people. Mexico is a whole lot bigger than that. You saw here in Guadalajara, just the city of Guadalajara is much bigger than Baja California. Mexico City, huge. Monterey. So you'll need to decide where you want to start selling your product. So that's one of the things you decide. Pros of selling in Mexico. Now you're the importer of record. Okay? Your own company. So when we started, um, let's call it Nary's, Nary's USA, we had Nary's de Mexico. So it was Nary's USA sold to Nary's de Mexico and we were the importer of record. You only need to import paper, you only need to only do the export paper once because you're doing it to yourself. So now once it's in country, you don't need to do those 10 things that you need to do. You only need to label once. Your company's the, the label's with you. So it's exported by, imported by, already done for you. You have just-in-time inventory. Products in your warehouse in Tijuana, buyer calls, you deliver the next day. Lower freight costs because now you're shipping in full truckloads, hopefully. <coughs> You control the distribution model, you control the pricing, you control the marketing. Now you guys are in charge, you're handling all the marketing, either if you're giving rebates, you're giving free product, you're writing the ads for the, for the promotions, you're doing that. Okay, selling to Mexico, cons of selling in Mexico. You will need employees or several employees in Mexico. You will need to hire smart accountants and lawyers. You will need to be educated on all the tax and employment, employment laws. You will need an executive officer or even a warehouse. You will need to open two bank accounts, one in pesos and one in dollars. You will need a warehouse to hold your merchandise and you will need trucking to make deliveries. These are all things you're doing right now in the US, okay? Uh, some use third-party logistics, but more than not, you have your own model. If you're doing DSD, you're delivering, you have a warehouse, you're doing the trucking. So I tell a lot of people that there's always two borders in Mexico. They say, what do you mean by two borders? So we have to explain it to them. Right along the border, there's something called the free zone, where products get imported in, and it pays 11% duty, so free zone. Then once it goes past that, it's what's called the interior zone, and there's a 16% duty, okay? So, a lot of people say, well, how do they keep track? Trust me, they keep track. So when you import into Baja, you use what's called a green pedimento. When you cross into the other, the interior zone, it's a white pedimento. And every time a truck goes, there's a separate border, they stop and check it. I brought a little thing to pass around so you can look at the amount of paperwork that goes in. If you can pass it around, just take a look at the paperwork that they have you do. So what we do is we have what's called landed costs. So when we deliver to one of our other warehouses, you would think that the white pedimento that the government issued you would be enough. It's not. They make us do 10 other paperwork to do. Then. When you make a delivery to a store, it's a whole other thing of paperwork. That's when you're crossing state lines and crossing this border. If you just import into Tijuana and just deliver into Tijuana, it's easy. It's like the United States of America. But when you start going through different states, now they have a new thing where they need guia. So every state needs a guia. So when we leave from Baja to go to Monterey, we cross four states, we need four different guias. Which doesn't make any sense, but that's what you need to do. Then we have what's called the hybrid model. So let's talk about a hybrid, which allows you to get all the pros and get rid of all the cons and headaches of doing business in Mexico. This is what our largest client, Little Caesars Pizza, does, and it has worked great for them. Listen to what Matt Illich had to say about working with Mary's. They took control of our existing logistics in Mexico, allowing the franchisees to focus on selling pizza only and not worrying about trucks being stuck at the border. They handle the whole country of Mexico with national pricing. They're very pleased with the organization, would recommend them to anyone looking to do business in Mexico. Blue Line is a very big company. They've been around 55 years. Uh, I'm sure if they really wanted to, they could come into Mexico. They found that it probably wasn't worth all the headaches and brain damage, and so they did the hybrid model that, that I'm going to talk about. Well, so just get rid of all the headaches of selling in Mexico. Nary's Logistics, they can do all the importation of your product, taking care of all permits, paying of all duties and taxes. They will have your product securely warehoused from their five strategically placed warehouse throughout Mexico. Each warehouse has dry, refrigerated, and frozen capabilities. They also have a new bonded warehouse, our new Bodega Fiscal, which saves you the cash flow to pay upon importation. You only pay after your product is sold or you take it out of a bonded warehouse. 
So let me give you a couple of examples. Restaurant equipment. We import restaurant equipment. It pays a 16% EVA duty. So if a restaurant is $150,000, when you get it to the border, you have to pay about $15,000 to the government. They don't give you credit. But if you bring it in and you bring it in bond, you don't pay that. It sits in that bonded warehouse. When our client's ready to pull it out, that's when we pay the petty men to cross it out. It works great on energy drinks. It works even better on cigarettes. A truckload of cigarettes gets to the bonded warehouse at about $100,000. When it gets pulled out of the bonded warehouse, it's about a million dollars. So while it's sitting there, we don't pay the taxes on it. How many of these warehouses do you have? Uh, we have five warehouses. We only have one bonded warehouse, and that's in Tijuana. Oh. Why does it work so well in Tijuana? Because we have trucks going to all five warehouses throughout Mexico. They leave on Friday, they get there Monday morning. So if you have a client and we bring a truckload of water filters in and it happens to pay a duty, and we take four pallets out on Friday, by Monday morning it's sitting in Monterey. So very costly to do a bonded warehouse. We didn't feel the need to do five bonded warehouses. Maybe in the future, if you have a client that needs it, we'll look into doing it. Uh, they handle all of your picking, loading a product, ready for clients to pick up. We would love for your clients to come pick up from our warehouse. It usually doesn't happen that way. We handle the delivery to your customers, full truckloads, pallets, or even, we call it case uh, door to door, uh, DSD delivery. What, if you had a, if something is sitting in Tijuana and a customer in Cancun needs it, how, what's the travel time uh, on the truck? Uh, we send it to our Mexico City, Mexico City facility. Takes about three days, and depending on when the next route goes out, uh, it would be there in three days. So anywhere from six to 15 days on whatever. If it's a full truckload, we could probably get in there in four days and we go straight. Okay. They will handle the invoicing, so you decide the pricing. They will handle the collections, you decide credit terms, the pricing in dollars or pesos. We can do either or, so you tell us, hey, do this plan in pesos, do this one in dollars, give them terms, don't give them terms, you decide all that. There is a, after the collection has taken place, then we wire the money to your bank account in USA, in US dollars. So they can provide just-in-time delivery to your customers, inventory management system, fully insured from our warehouses. We track our trucks with GPS so you know where your product is at any time of the day. If you wanna know where your product is, we can tell you. And all our warehouses are well, we talk about insured, but NSF, NSF is National Safety Federation, so it's a food, anti-bioterrorism um, is big on that. A recall, if there's a food product and you do a recall, we know where that product is at any time. Where we deliver it to, we deliver it to an end user in the store, we deliver it to a distributor, then we lose control of where it went from that. But our systems can track it all the way from when we pick it up to when it's delivered. So that is ours on selling in Mexico or selling to Mexico. I know I gave you a lot of information. I gave it really quick, but if you have any questions, you can ask it now or after we're done, you can ask. Are you set up as the importer of record on the labels? <coughs> That's correct. We do offer that service. Uh, or, is it, is it, or is that an option or is that the way it is? Would you do that? It's an option. We have clients that have their own Mexican corporation that does the invoicing, the facturas. And so what we do is we do everything we talked about except for the invoicing. Then we have people that say, we don't want to open a corporation in Mexico. Can you handle it for us? And that's what we do with Google. Do you consult and give this level of uh, information to customers that you know, aren't in this room now and might say, you know, I'd like to learn more about it and if we're a representative for our customer that's manufacturing in the United States and then shipping into Mexico, could you, you know, be a source for Providing we do consulting. We also have a book. We're going to give a book to everyone. They can, we can send books. We give them free to the client so they can read about it. Uh, then when they're ready, they want to talk to us. We do what's called a discovery call to see where they are in the chain. Some of them are already doing it. Our best clients are the ones that tried it and failed, and then we do it. Uh, new people, they'll say, well, of course, that's how it's supposed to work. Yes, we're open for that. Um, and, and especially with all the information we're going to give you tonight, they don't have to use a service like ours. Uh, you can do it all from scratch. We we talked about the last three days. We've made every mistake that could possibly be made. So that's why we're experts. No other reason. And um, and so we bring that knowledge to the people that need. So a lot of our clients are already in the room. We have some new clients. Uh, we represent some of the largest companies in the U.S. 
from Little Caesars to Five Hour Energy. Uh, we have our own brands. We represent a cheese company called Quesoneris. And, uh, and for logistics, we have another 20 or 30 clients that we don't even talk much about. But Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much for coming. And uh, enjoy the rest of your trip here.